Hello and welcome to Sedated Dreams, a channel that is pretty much the namesake of this bad boy here. This is the AVC-80, made in Sweden in 1978. It's made by Diab Data Industry AB in collaboration with the TV manufacturer Luxor. Scandiametric was also part of the development team. It all started one year earlier actually with the TRS-80 from Tandy Radio Shack in the US. Carl Johan Burjesson and Lars Karlsson that worked, one worked at uh, Scania Metric, the other one worked at Diab, saw the TRS-80 and thought, hey, we should make a computer in Sweden as well and try to sell it. So they started designing this ABC-80. Uh, this is the screen here and this is the computer itself. They designed it. Uh, they wanted to call it the Home Computer 80 at first, the HD 80. D for the Swedish word for computer, dator, hemma dator 80. But these two guys uh, at Scania Metric and uh, Diab, they didn't have the industrial capabilities to produce a vast number of computers. So they turned to the TV manufacturer Luxor and asked for help. And Luxor, of course, saw an opportunity to sell picture tubes, thought this was a great idea. So, how does this one compare to contemporary computers? Well, one year earlier, in 77, we saw the big tree, we saw the Commodore PET, we saw the TRS-80 and the Apple II. This one was a year late, uh, it came in 78, inspired by the TRS-80. So I took some numbers here to compare it. Well, just like the TRS-80, it has a Scilog Z80 processor in it. Hence the channel name, Z80 Dreams. But in the TRS-80, the processor ran at 1.77 MHz, while in this one it ran at 3 MHz. So it was almost twice the speed as the TRS-80. It also had consider more, considerably more memory. This one came with 32 kilobytes of program memory as compared with, well, first 4 kilobytes at the TRS-80 Model 1 and they later upgraded to the 16 kilobyte version. But even then, this had 32 kilobytes of program memory. Even the ROM is bigger, the read-only memory. It's 24 kilobyte as compared to the 16 kilobyte in the TRS-80. On the other hand, it was almost twice as expensive. This costed, well, it's always difficult to find <laughs> numbers for all computers like this, but what I found out was that it costed $1,400 when it came out. Well, I converted it to dollars because you had to pay in Swedish kroners, of course. It was also faster than the Apple II and the Commodore PET, although it used they used different processors, so you can't really compare it that way. They used uh, the Apple II and the Commodore PET both used the MOS 6502 processor at 1 MHz and with 4 KB of program memory. Uh, that's the base configuration that you got when you bought the computer. At the, in the Apple II you could upgrade it to 48K and in the Commodore PET well, they cancelled the 4 kilobyte version pretty soon and started selling 8 kilobyte versions. Um, but even then, you could upgrade the Commodore PET to 96 kilobyte. And the ROM was 8 kilobytes in both the Apple II and the Commodore PET. So it had well, four times as big read only memory. Well, this ABC Auto had almost four times as big read-only memory as the Apple II and the Commodore PET just one year later. It had more memory and, well, processor speed, you know, the Z80 is a... Uh, it requires more instructions, it's a reduced uh, instruction set processor, I think it's called, <laughs> while the MOS uh, 6502 it could do more things in each processor cycle. So you can't really compare the speeds that way, but even then I think the 
ROM and uh, program memory speak for itself that this had pretty badass capabilities, although it was very expensive. Uh, as far as I can tell, it was more costly than the Apple II even, and of course more costly than the Commodore PET, almost twice the price as the PET. I had this at an exhibition a couple of weeks ago, a retro game exhibition, and basically you can, uh, it, it's a text graphic, so you cannot run any fancy games, it's black and white. But text adventures, uh, you could play Pong, you could play Tetris on it and well, simple games like that. Here is the cassette deck from it where you load the programs. I don't have any program cassettes myself, so well, I just use a sound file. <laughs> I play, out, uh, play up a sound file from, uh, from my phone or my computer through here. Put the cassette in. What I noticed during the exhibition though was that the enter button uh, started to fail. So the children who were playing on this computer started pressing harder and harder and almost punching on the enter uh, key. So I shut it down and I said okay you can look at the rest of the exhibition. I have Commodores. I have VIC-20s, I have old Macintosh. Uh, you can play on these, but uh, yeah, this one needs, uh, needs a doctor to look at it. <laughs> what I have started doing is to remove all the keys from it. Let me just get these things out of the way so I can show you more easily. Ah, and the power supply is actually built into the screen. That's Pretty fancy. So you plug the you plug the screen into the wall, to the power outlet in the wall, and then you plug your combined data and power cable into the computer slash keyboard. So it's uh, it was a bit innovative in that way. I removed all the keys. I cleaned them with some Windex. Just as uh, David at 8-Bit Guy taught me, always clean, 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 clean. So, I cleaned all this with Windex. I hope David is proud of me. <laughs> so, I have taken off all the keys. Uh, well, here's the uppercase key. Number six. I have also cleaned the springs. So... Yeah, here they are. And I have not cleaned the plungers yet because, oh, here's one without a metal disc. So these metal discs, so you see, they have some foam here. Oh, come on, focus camera. Yeah, they have some foam and then there's a metal disc. And this foam is supposed to well, press against uh, some conductive element uh, inside the keyboard. I will show you later how to disassemble the ABC-80 and how to take this out. The problem with this is that the foam itself is very old. Well, it's from 78, so... And it's very hot inside the computer, so it's starting to dry up. And you can see it just coming off like this. And that's what happened with the Enter key when I was at the exhibition. and. Well, now I need to repair it. You can see how dry it is, it just comes off. So, I started thinking, what should I do? Should I try to get new uh, foam, cotton wool or whatever you call it in English, and just glue it on here between and just put this little metal disc back. Oh god, it's getting dusty from this foam. Whoops. Or should I just replace the entire thing? I mean, obviously not the plunger, but should I replace the conductive foil as well? So I went out 
I went to the city, I strolled around and I found Mylar. So I bought a Mylar cape. It's actually made for well, the emergency services give this to people who are almost freezing to death to keep them warm. Uh, I bought one and I took my multimeter and measured the resistance. And I noticed that only one side is conductive. So I, uh, I almost suspect there is some kind of plastic on one side and then the foil is on the other side. But you can't tell the difference just by looking at it. Uh, so I have to measure and I have to mark it with a little pen uh, to not put the wrong side towards the toward down that should be the conductive side. So, yeah. And I also found this cotton wool and I went for a one that is five millimeters thick because I tried to measure this and well, the old one was four millimeters and I wanted to have some extra uh, because I was thinking maybe this has become decompressed over the years. So I think this will be fine. Although this is a little bit more porous uh, than the old one. Let's see how it works out. I also bought a brandless adhesive spray. So my plan is to spray this and then just put the mylar on it so it becomes well glued to it. After that, I'm planning on using this hole punch to punch out little circles with foil and foam attached. And it's a little bit smaller than this, but it's hardly noticeable. It's half a millimeter too small, but I think it will work. Um, let's see. I will try on a few keys and see how it works out. One thing that I forgot to mention about this fantastic old computer is that it sparked a revolution in Sweden, a computer revolution. Because we didn't buy so many TRS-80s, we didn't buy apples, uh, well, a few apples maybe. Uh, we bought a few Commodores, but mainly people bought this ABC-80. I mean, industries, schools, uh, people use this in school to learn, learn about computer, learn about programming. And there are some wonderful books written on it, uh, in Swedish, unfortunately. Like this, ABC about BASIC. This is how to program BASIC on the ABC-80. And it's very in-depth. It doesn't just show, you know, how to solve calculations and so on, but it shows how to use this text graphic, well, the graphical capabilities. And you see, you can plot things and it even shows how to do some simple games. Ah, it's also on how to design a program. So here's a flowchart and how you should think about program construction. Uh, it teaches you about the hardware of the computer a little bit. It teaches you how to use the graphical uh, characters to give an illusion of graphics. So it's a, it's a really in-depth book about basic programming. And this became very common. It got distributed in a lot of elementary schools. And I think to some degree it made Sweden into a more digital society back in the 70s and 80s. It started off the path towards becoming a more IT savvy country, if you want to call it that. This one is also basic, the microcomputer ABC. This is not the original print. As you can see, I have uh, just printed this because I cannot find the original one. If you have it, I want to buy it from you. 
it shows you how logic gate works and even before that how logic gates are built up it shows you how the logic gates are used to build up a cpu all the addresses in the cpu uh, how the bus works i mean it's really you don't you don't find computer books like this anymore it is from the very basic to how a functioning computer works this also has a very own bus system the abc bus here at the back which is very cool uh, it was used in a lot of industrial applications but it was also used to uh, extend the memory you could extend the memory up to uh, I think 48 kilobytes on this one from yeah from 32 base memory down up to 48 by attaching more memory back here you could attach printers floppy devices um, industrial controller like uh, controlling relays for industrial applications and so on and you didn't have to choose one of these applications you can do it all at the same time because you could kind of daisy chain this so it was very advanced for its time it's not like the well, it is a little bit like the U support at the Commodore 64, but it's, I would dare to say it's more advanced than that. So it's, it's really cool. Yeah, so I will start off with uh, gluing and I will show you how it goes. And of course, I need coffee for this because I need to activate my caffeine powers. Mm. Let's go. So I got this Mylar from a prepper store actually. Um, and prepper stores are really fun because they have a lot of things that you can use for... Well, if you want to prepare for a nuclear winter, you can of course buy the things there. But you can also use the things to repair old computers. So this Mylar, it's... Uh, very rough and tough it's not like a uh, normal aluminum foil and but only one side is conductive that's the problem i also got this from a craft shop it's uh, some kind of cut and wool uh, i hope it will be appropriate maybe it's too fluffy maybe i need to buy something with uh, a little bit more density to it uh, anyway I will try and see how it works out so the first thing I need to do is to have a sip of coffee ah that's better well I need to find out which side is conductive and then I need to mark it so uh, I have my faithful multimeter here and I put it in continuity mode like that and it should be if it's if this is the conductive side let's see oh nothing is beeping let's try this side then oh can you hear that so this is the conductive side then this is not the conductive side so i will make a little cross here just to remember that this side should not be used and this non-conductive side is the side that the glue should go on so i have some brandless glue uh, because i don't get any money so i don't want to make any <laughs> advertisement So I will try to glue this on somehow. I don't know if I should spray on this or if I should spray on the cotton wool. Hmm. I think uh, I think I will spray on the mylar. Let's see. Oh, and uh, 
If you have a nice table, uh, be sure to cover it before. All right. Whoop. Uh, you might not know this, but this is my first time working with spray on glue. <laughs> Okay, I think that's pretty good. Well, I don't need a big sheet, obviously, because these little discs are so tiny and I think this will be enough. Uh, I think it should dry for some time. Let's see if there are any drying time on this one. Um, I can't see any. Well, let, we can let it dry overnight and uh, see what happens. And while it dry, you should of course brew yourself some coffee. <sighs> Did you seriously think I was going to wait overnight? I'm way too impatient for that. So. It has dried, I got the right side out, the conductive side. So let's try to punch some holes in this. I got this hole puncher and a hammer. And of course I don't want to ruin my table, so I put this cardboard in the bottom. Okay, let's see if it's, it's not a hole. Um, it's not a hole. Hmm. Maybe this smiler is too tough. I will try from this side. Oh, it's starting to become like a hole. Let's see. Well, I might have to rethink my plan. Um, you know what? I will just mark the circles with this. And then I will use a small scissor to cut it out. I think that might be better. Uh, because I'm also kind of ruining this foamy side now. And I don't want to do that. Huh. Okay, I will start over here and see if I use... If I do like this, and then I cut it, I think that's good. Let's do a bunch of them, huh? All right, and... Now it's like beginning to look like a hole, but it's it hasn't cut through because the smiler is tougher than I anticipated. So I will cut cut it out. So this is how it looks like after the hole punch. It's like beginning to be a hole, but not quite. Uh, so I used the scissor to cut it. And I also noticed that there is a little plastic disc here in this one, in the plunger, that needs to be at the bottom of everything. So I need to glue it like this, but 
Then I noticed that this cotton wool, it's too fluffy, so it's coming off. So this was clearly not a good solution. I need some thicker kind of foam, you know, like this Scotch bright foam, that kind of type. Uh, because this is clearly not working. Well, luckily I have a lot of mylar. I have like an entire sheet, so I can just use this for something else. So uh, I guess this will be a two part story then. Well, so, uh, that turned out to be a failure. Yo, this is Maria from the editing room here. <laughs> I'm sitting here and editing the video. Another failure turned out to be the autofocusing of my camera. It's a very blurry image. Uh, I apologize for that. Okay, let's go on. Uh, this cotton wool is too soft. I need something more stiff. And I also noticed that it's peeling off very easily. So as you can see this little disc it has almost all the cotton wool is gone from it. Um, well if you compare it with this one you can see. So uh, and I also noticed this little plastic disc in here. I think I will reuse this because there's really no sense in making new little plastic discs. They are quite stiff as well, these plastic, plastic discs. So I will just wash them off uh, and reuse them. So uh, that will be a, this will be a multiple episode saga, I guess. Uh, as you can see, uh, this also has some uh, discolorations or actually it's the paint that has come off, come off. Uh, this has not been yellowed or anything like that. It was actually painted in this color originally. Uh, I don't want to repaint the entire computer because I don't want this logo to be overpainted. It's not a sticker. It, it has been put there using a stencil of some sort. Uh, so I have to find the exact same color uh, uh, and uh, the same hue. So and just repaint these uh, bits here. Uh, or alternatively, I need to find a way of putting these logos back. So I don't know what is best, either repainting the whole thing and putting logos back or just find a close color and patch it all up. And what if I don't find the right color? It might show some differences where I have painted it. Let's see. So, in the next episode, I will have a new material for the foam. I will probably talk a bit more about the hardware of this computer. And I will open it up for you so you can see inside it as well. And talk about the chips they used and why they uh, used this design choice. And we might play a game on it even. So... Uh, See you in the next episode of uh, Z80 Dreams then. Ta-da!